When you are experiencing anxiety, depression or dissociation, your mind will wander and you will focus on things that are more often than not negative. Grounding is a skill that will help you plant your two figurative feet back into the ground and help you focus on yourself, on what you can physically feel, your surroundings and your emotions. If you're overwhelmed by anxiety, depression or dissociation, your mind is technically all over the place. Through grounding, you can reframe your mind, yourself, into the present, into the now. Here are some of the types of grounding that you should know about. Physical grounding. This particular type of grounding is all about having your patient focus on all the physical sensations that they are currently feeling, like their hands resting on the arms of a chair, their two feet planted on the floor, the slight itches on their face, the aches in their joints and muscles, and more. By becoming more aware of their physical sensations, they can become aware of what is causing them. Becoming more aware of these physical sensations will let them realize what exactly happens to them when they are distressed. Some techniques and exercises used in physical grounding are squeezing a stress ball, stretching, taking a cold or warm shower, hugging a pillow, toy or pet and more. Mental and emotional grounding, similar to physical grounding, are encouraged to focus on their emotions and feelings. By becoming more aware of their negative emotions, they will have the opportunity to identify what is triggering these. By knowing the triggers, they will have chances to manage their negative emotions and cope with anxiety or depression in healthy ways. Some techniques and exercises used in mental and emotional grounding are saying the alphabet backwards, reciting songs and poems to yourself, indulging your sense of humour and more. Sensory grounding. This is a type of grounding where people practice techniques that take advantage of our five senses. By focusing on what we can feel based on our five senses, we are able to focus on the present moment, which is the core principle of grounding. The techniques that fall under this are as simple as touching grass, smelling flowers and listening to ambient noises like the birds chirping and the honking of cars. Social and spiritual grounding. For social related activities, it can be as simple as talking to loved ones or friends and even join a community led effort or something good. Such techniques are there to help combat feelings of loneliness and isolation. As for spiritual related activities, they can simply be acts of faith like prayer or meditation or for the secular people, a simple reflection on what they value and cherish most. Whenever a person experiences emotional distress, anxiety, panic, depression and stress, their sympathetic nervous system is activated. This is the part of our nervous system that carries signals related to our fight or flight responses throughout our body. If the person is panicking, then the sympathetic nervous system will activate and may cause symptoms such as their skin feeling cold, palpitations, increased heart rate and more. How grounding works is that it activates the parasympathetic nervous system. This particular nervous system is responsible for our rest and digest response. This means that this is the system that counteracts the sympathetic nervous system and makes us feel more relaxed and at peace. A specific exercise which is quite popular among health practitioners is the 54321 grounding exercise. First they need to take a deep breath and be aware of their surroundings. They need to notice where they are and what is happening around them. Five. After taking a deep breath, they just have to identify five things in the immediate environment they see. They can identify just about anything. 4. Next, the person practicing this grounding technique must touch four things. They can touch and feel the texture of their shirt, they can lean their back and feel the wall behind them, and even pet their dog or cat to feel their fur. 3. After touching things, they need to identify three things that they can hear. This can be the sound of the rain on the roof, the gentle hum of an air conditioning unit, and more. Two. Second to last, they need to identify two things they can smell. This can be freshly cooked food that their mother whipped up and a smell of perfume wafting around the house. One. Lastly, they simply need to taste something. Hopefully something delicious, so it's best that they have a snack. To learn more about grounding and how to use it in your practice, check out our guide on our Care Patreon platform which you can find in the link in our description. Or check out our guides playlist for more information like this. Thank you for watching our video at Care Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. If you would like to see more videos like these, subscribe to our Care Patron channel or click on one of our recommended videos.